You can't talk about classic rock guitar tones from the 60s and 70s without talking about small tube amps that were cranked in the studio to get rich natural sustain and overdrive. And one of the most popular of these amps were the Fender Champs. And of those, one of the most popular was the 57 Narrow Panel Champ. This is a reissue of that that's being put out by Fender. This is a hand-wired, faithful reissue that's a fantastic little amp. But the question is, is, is this something that by today's standards you can actually use with any sort of versatility? A lot of people like to describe them as one-trick ponies. Well, we're going to take this one, put it through its paces, try it out with a bunch of different tones, and talk about whether or not this is something that you should get, what you can use it for, and whether or not it is a one-trick pony. So let's get started with some tone here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Follow the links below where you can listen to some music, and I hope you enjoy. I've been wanting one of these little amps for a long time. One of the reasons that I've been wanting to get my hands on one is because many of the tones that made me fall in love with electric guitar when I was a kid were recorded on little Fender Champs. There were certainly other small amps in the studio that people used to use. Supro was, of course, a big one, you know, little tiny Supro amps that were cranked, among others. But the Champ was one of the most popular ones. And I think one of the interesting things is how much of the significance of guitar history is based on volume, right? The acoustic guitar got a pickup and became electric in the first place so that it would be loud enough to compete with bands. Then, because these arch-top acoustic guitars with pickups in them were feeding back at certain volumes to get them even louder, the solid-body electric guitar was developed, of course, credit going to Leo Fender and Les Paul kind of doing their thing and, and taking it a step further to be able to get louder again without having feedback issues. Amplifiers had to go up in wattage so that they could get a cleaner tone at louder volumes, but then guitarists also discovered that they loved the natural overdriven sound of a tube amp getting to the point where it's clipping and overdriving, so then they started using small smaller amps in the studio so that they could get that sound without blowing the walls off. There are legends about Cream and Jimi Hendrix in the recording studio and recording so, so loud that you could hear them city blocks away. I don't know if those are true. I like to believe that they are. But that's not sustainable one way or another. That That's, you know, for as much as people love to talk about loud rock and roll, that's honestly just not a sustainable business model, let's say. You need to be able to do things at reasonable volumes. Nowadays, all this digital emulation that's coming out is to achieve natural overdriven tones at volumes that you can control to a T. Now you can get them through headphones. Well, in the day, if you wanted to get that kind of tone at any sort of reasonable volume, 
you would get one of these amps, which were originally actually intended as beginner or student level practice amps. They weren't really designed for much else than that, and they were very simple. This amplifier has a high gain input, a low gain input, and a volume, and that is what you get with this amp, and you get its natural tone. It has three tubes. It has a 12AY7 in the preamp, it has a 6V6 in the power amp, and it has a rectifier tube. Now, this particular model also has a Weber-designed Alnico speaker and a solid pine cab, as well as the lacquered tweed coating. Interestingly, the little name badge they put on it says Fender Champ, whereas the old ones, at least from pictures that I've seen, all just say Fender on it. I like that it says Fender Champ. It's kind of a nice little unique thing to this model in particular. But that was what was charming about these amps is that they weren't really intended to be much, but they sounded great. They were simple to use and they could get you a very distinct overdriven tone at a volume that was reasonable for studio and for other use. Now, everyone loves to talk about cranking these amps. Even when you look at the literature, I, I did the Sweetwater read up before diving into this video and checking out all the specs. Everything always talks about, well, the tone of these amps is from cranking them, just getting them wide open and, and letting it soar. I'm going to be contrarian here. I'm going to say that some of the best tones from these amps are not from cranking them. Now, I want to clarify, cranking them is a great sound, and we're going to do some of that coming up here. And you can certainly do a lot of things with cranking these amps or getting them nearly cranked and then using your guitar's volume knob. It's a very, it's a different way of playing than certainly having a big pedal board. And it's even different than just riding your volume with some other amps. I almost want to say it's like a B3 player, you know, using the different stops and then using the Leslie speaker and the ramp to change the power and punch and dynamics of their tone. It's kind of like that with this type of amplifier. Now, one of the reasons I say that you can get great tones if you don't crank it is because when you crank it and get it fully wide open, it all compresses to the middle. It's just this kind, it's a great tone. It's a distinct tone from a lot of records, but it's this it's all mid-range basically it's it's just all this kind of you know mid-range and it seems like a soft clipping it doesn't have that hard edge to it it's a sound that has defined a lot of rock and roll records but that's the one sound that gets associated with these amps they say oh well they sound small and boxy and okay so it does sound small and boxy this amp but you can make it sound more dynamic. Interestingly, I saw a video a while ago that said the way to get a great clean tone in the studio is to play a champ and don't turn it up past three. And I thought, that's a bold statement. It's a little five watt amp and you don't turn it up past three. Are you kidding me? So I wanted to try it because I do love these amps clean. They're incredibly dynamic. They're incredibly, they're just natural. They just give you the sound of your guitar with no bells and whistles, just the natural sound of your guitar. And what I think is especially cool about that is because these were accessible to beginners, uh, intermediate players, students used as practice amps. For a lot of people back in the 1950s, plugging in guitars for the first time, that would have been the sound that they had just plugging into this little thing, that's what they would have heard. So in that way, it kind of seems like a time capsule. Now, all that being said, let's dive back in here with some tone. I'm going to play this at the volume of three and see what it sounds like to see if there's any merit to that. Now, I can't remember what video that was that I saw it on. It was someone being interviewed in the studio. If anyone knows what video that is, please, please post it in the comments because I don't want to take credit for that approach to using the champ. It was not my idea. It was something that I saw in a video and I simply just don't remember what the video was. So please feel free to put that in the comments. Let's take a listen to how it sounds with the volume at three. I think it sounds very pretty. It sounds very natural. There's one massive problem. It's so quiet. I could barely hear it. Just me in the room and I could barely hear it. I could hear the strings of my guitar louder than I could hear the amplifier. Then you can run into problems with mic noise, interference, and, and things like that, and just trying to boost the signal to a point where you can hear it. So I want to try it another way now. 
many of you know that I like using low gain inputs on amplifiers. If you've watched some of my other amp demos, I really like the slightly saggier, slightly more dynamic, not quite as brash tones that you get from the low gain input. Now, a lot of players aren't going to think about using the low gain input, especially on a small amp like this, but that's where I would actually start. So let's try it with a low gain input and we're going to get the volume up to six. Now this should still be pretty clean. We're going to try this with both the Stratocaster and a Les Paul to hear how this sounds. So let's see what we can get for a clean tone if we go into low gain input and put the volume at six. <laughs> Now that works better for me. It has a little bit more edge. It has a little bit more presence than it did just running into the regular input with the volume at three. But the volume was more present and in a way where I felt comfortable playing it and, and wasn't just trying to hear what it sounded like just being in the room with it. Really, really great tone there. Now, I've actually used this amplifier for a live performance already, if you can believe that, because you can use any amp you want if you're mic'd up, and that is the bare bones truth of it. And that's going to kind of lead into a little bit of what we're going to talk about later, of whether or not this is an amp you should think about getting. So keep that in mind. When I played it live, I played it with the volume at about five to six, and I had a microphone on it, and I used a pedal with it. And I will say that in that situation, it sounded powerful. Don't believe me that it's powerful? This amp goes to 12. It's not getting to the point where the EQ is completely rounding out to an ultra compressed kind of sound. I do want to mention that when I performed with it live, I was going into the high gain input. So I'm going to try and recreate this a little bit from what I was doing live. So I'm going to go into the high gain input with the volume around six. We're going to hear it clean and then hit it with a pedal to see if this is something that you could do some live performances with. Now I'm not going to get into a crazy pedal board. I'm just going to hit it with a max on 808, see what it sounds like with the tube screamer and whether or not this is something that you could consider actually using for a little mini live rig. <laughs> Now, it, it's a sound. It, it works. It does sound boxy and small, but this amp sounds boxy in the most charming way ever. This is one of the few amps that I would say that it sounds boxy, and that's a positive. That's part of its character. There are other kind of mid-level amplifiers that you'll see out there where people say, geez, that sounds really boxy, and that's not a good thing, but that's part of this sound in a good way. That's that's it's just part of the vibe, it's part of the history of it, and it's something that in this case with the amplifier it works. So if I say it sounds boxy, understand that I'm not saying that as a criticism or an insult. That's part of the charm of this amplifier. Now, 
what a lot of you want to hear is this thing a little bit more wide open. Some of the players who would have done that in the studio believe Joe Walsh did, uh, Eric Clapton did. Believe it or not, though, it seems that Clapton may have used a vibro champ on the Layla sessions. There's some conflicting reports about that, but one way or another, he definitely used a tweed champ at times. And I do believe that Dwayne Ullman recorded into a tweed champ in the Layla sessions based on what I found. Some of the records on that are a little bit hazy, so it can be hard to track down the exact information other than just what different people's accounts were. But that is the sound of many of those records from the 1970s. So we're going to try it out wide open with a couple of different guitars here with a Stratocaster and a Telecaster. And then at the end, we're going to try it out on a couple of different settings. So here it is wide open with both the Stratocaster and the Telecaster and riding the volume knob a little bit to show you how dynamic it can be. <laughs> Lastly, to kind of prove the point, I want to play it with the Les Paul on several different volume settings. We're going to start with it wide open, then we're going to back it off down to like six. And you'll hear it still gets a lot of nice clipping, but it actually sounds a bit more dynamic. It sounds a bit fuller because it's not compressing so much into that mid range. It's giving you a, a kind of a wider frequency range. Again, it still sounds small. It's part of the amp. It's part of what makes this amp charming. So I'm not going to say it makes it sound like a massive thing, but it, it does give you more than just the one sound that's generally associated with the champ. So let's hear it with the Les Paul on these different settings. <laughs>
So is this an amp that you should think about getting? Here's the thing. Can you use it for a lot of applications? Yes. Is it a one trick pony? No, but it does still have a sound. It has a sound and it sounds like a small studio amp. If you want that sound, then I think this is absolutely an amplifier that's worth getting. Now, the only thing that would detract me is if you, you don't have a you know good kind of well-rounded rig. I don't know that it's necessarily a rig that in today's world I would have as the kind of the, the basis of my tone, the cornerstone of my tone. It's kind of been relegated to more of a specialized tone. Now, there are certainly people out there who could still use it for their primary tone, and it's a great amp. You can get beautiful clean tones, great recording, and get a really full picture of it in recording, too, because you have to do less EQing. You have to do, you know, you have to use a lot of high-pass filtering when you're EQing guitars to sit in a song mix, and you'd have to do a lot less of that with this, the benefit there being that you get the full picture of the guitar tone in the song without needing to cut out as many frequencies as it doesn't have any spiky frequencies, it doesn't have any nasty spiky treble frequencies, it has a beautiful rich mid-range, has a, a little bit of this kind of like lower mid instead of bass kind of end, and part of that being just that it's a small amp with a small speaker, but a really beautiful rich natural tone. I love it clean. I love this amplifier clean. It sounds powerful surprisingly for even though it sounds small it sounds powerful it sounds rich and present and i just love that about it if you don't have a really good gigging amp by modern standards this wouldn't necessarily be my first choice to go out and grab but if you do have that need fulfilled I would say this is not just a one trick pony and you can use it for a lot of different things. But that's my opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments. Do you own this amp? Do you own other small five watt amps? What do you use them for? What kind of speaker configurations do they have? Do you have a vintage champ? If you have a vintage champ and it differs from this one in any sort of different ways, please let us know in the comments. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Click on that link below where you can follow me on Spotify and we'll see you next time.